Okay. So, um, one of my favorite verses in Scripture is, uh, amongst my many favorites, is uh, Romans 8.28, that God works all things together for good. And, uh, and He does. And it's difficult for us to comprehend how things like disasters, tragedies, um, God can work it out for good, but that's the promise. And um, because it's true in my life, uh, during very difficult times, I, uh, I'm absolutely convinced of the truth. And I try to convince everybody else, trust God, believe Him, because uh, he promises in Romans 8:28, after good times of prayer, intercession, you know, and and uh, that uh, the apostle Paul says, and this we know, we we know this, that uh, in all things God works together for good, or God works all things together for good. But not for everybody. There are two requirements. Number one is for those who love God. None of us love Him perfectly. We need to grow in our love for God. At least I do. But um, we love Him. And the second requirement is that we are called according to His purpose. In other words, you got to know. Because everybody is called in some way. But you got to know that uh, that your life has significance. God has called you to accomplish something, to do something, to be something. So it's it's you got to there are those who love God and are called according to His purpose. And so what I do is I I use an illustration, and I call it all for the good, Sahib, all for the good. So, um, Sahib was a uh, Persian uh, leader, and he had servants, but there was one servant that he had. Uh, his, uh, his name is not known, so we'll call him the servant, but Sahib uh, recognized that this servant just loved Sahib. He loved him, he not only served him, for, you know, like room and board and so No, no, no. He actually had a personal love for Sahib and um, would serve him to the best of his ability in every way that he could. So, um, uh, he, one example is, you know, uh, th three camels got lost and Sahib <coughs> sent this servant who had the habit of saying all for the good sahib all for the good uh, he said go find these camels so he goes out and three days later he comes back and he says um sahib i found the camels but they were all dead but sahib all for the good all for the good and sahib said to Please stop saying that. It's not all for the good. My my camels, I need them, and three of them died, and and, and you come with this all for the good. Uh, stop it. And uh, the servant said, "Yes, Sahib. Yes, I, I will stop it." And so when things happened, you know, and his natural servant's natural inclination was to say all for the good. He muffled me. He muffled it and uh, didn't say it out of respect for Sahib, even though he believed it was all for the good. Well, Sahib one day was throwing a, a magnificent banquet party for all of his friends, and because Sahib was a traitor and a man of significant means, he threw the best. I mean, the tables were lavish and filled, filled with with vegetables and fruits and meats uh, 
roasted and cooked to perfection. I mean, uh, those uh, spare ribs were fall off the bones, uh, perfect, of course. And uh, so after the banquet, uh, Sahib took all his friends and uh, brought them out to the uh, uh, to the margin of their uh, place, the encampment, the uh, sandy place. And uh, Sahib had a curved Persian sword, and he had practiced to throw that sword up in the air and uh, let it spin and catch it by the handle when it came down. So they were kind of in a semicircle with Sahib in the middle and uh, the friends and our servant. So he, he threw the saber up and he flipped it and caught it by the handle. And of course his friends were, wow, that's terrific, you know, it's a nice sharp sword and uh, you know, wow, that's terrific. They, they said, can you do it twice? Can you, can you make it spin twice? Now Sahib knew that he could do it. He had practiced. So he said, oh, it's going to be difficult, but I'll try. And so he, he flips it a little higher and it goes swish, swish, and he got it by the handle. And of course they said, wow, great, you know, applause and so on. And you know how guys are, they, they push them, they say, well, can you do it three times? So, Sahib had practiced that a couple of times, you know, and uh, he wasn't as proficient of it, but, you know, his friends were just pushing him, so he, he, he took the sword and he threw it even higher, and it went swish, 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 thunk. He got it by the hand of it. Oh, the guy went crazy, you know. And uh, and uh, one guy, you know how guys are? He says, Sahib, can you do it four times? Can you flip that thing in the air four times? Now, Sahib had never done this. But you know, the peer pressure and the ego and so on just, just forced him to try something he had never done before. So he took that sword and he threw it high in the air and it went one, two, three, slice. He missed the handle and it took his thumb right off at the joint. And the blood was gushing out from his hand and the thumb was still wiggling in the sand and, and blood and thumb and, and, and so on. And, and the servant was watching this. He couldn't help it. He, he couldn't help it with a loud voice so everybody could hear it. He said, all oh, for the good, Sahib. All oh, for the good. They wrapped Sahib's hand up. There was no putting the sewing the thumb back in in those days. And, and so he had four fingers and no thumb. And he said to his servant, put that all for the good servant, put him in the prison tent. Or tie him to the center post, and I'm going on a trading mission. Give him only water and bread until I come back to teach him to stop saying that no matter what. Then he took the serving, the old for the good guy, and they tied him to the center post, and of course uh, he wasn't going to pull on the center post, that will bring the tent down on his head. So, and Sahib uh, was well enough, he took, I'd say three Tylenol, I don't know what they were doing those days, but uh, he, he wrapped his hand up and he was going on a trading mission three days away. And so he got a couple of his servants, they loaded up a couple of the camels they had left, and uh, they're, they're headed on this trading mission. And about one day's journey into the mission, a band of marauders, thieves, came out of the hills, descended upon him, the servants took off in every direction, and they, they captured the camels, they captured all the stuff, 
and they captured Sahib because with his infirmity and his weakness, he couldn't get away. And so they captured Sahib and uh, they brought uh, Sahib to their village, to their place, and, and he overheard them. They're saying they're going to sacrifice him, Sahib, to their heathen god in the morning. Oh, my goodness, Sahib didn't sleep well that night. And so in the morning they came to inspect him to see that uh, he was a perfect sacrifice for their deity. And so they inspect him, his head, his body, and so on. Then they notice he doesn't have any thumb. They said, we can't use him, he's imperfect, he's no, got no thumb. Uh, they said to say, get out of here, go home. Well, we can't use you. And so Sahib, the best he could, starts heading back in the direction of his, his house. And all he could think about is that servant in that tent saying all for the good because if Sahib had his thumb, he would have been sacrificed. But now because he didn't have a thumb, he's, he's allowed to live on and so it worked out all for the good. He lost his thumb, but he saved his life. So he couldn't wait to get back to get that guy out of the prison tent. And, and so he, he got home, he was weary, he was tired, he was sweaty, and, and, and so on. But he, he went to that tent and he, he said uh, to the servant, you know, you were right, uh, I lost my thumb. And, and you said, well, for the good, and I, I didn't believe it. And, but I didn't have a thumb and it saved my life because, you know, and he told him the story. And then Sahib thought, he says to the servant, he said, but, but what about you? It didn't work out all for the good for you because you've been here sweating and doing nothing but bread and water for these days. It didn't work out good for you, did it? And the servant said, Oh, Sahib, Sahib, all for the good. It did work. It did work out for good for me, because you know that I would never leave you, leave your side. I would always stand with you, no matter what. And if all the other servants ran away, I wouldn't run away. I would have been with you. And if they captured you, they would capture me also. And I have both my thumbs. All for the good, Sahib. All for the good. So the moral of the story is, it may look like a disaster, it may feel like a disaster, and in the eyes of man it might be a disaster, but he who we serve, by a process only known to him, he promises whatever you're going through, whatever you have gone through, that uh, you might lose something more precious than your thumb, but God still works it all for the good. And if your name is Sahib, I'll say, all for the good, Sahib, or Mary, or Diana, or <laughs> all for the good, Mike. God bless you. Bye.